Ponzi futuristic buildings. A trendy water feature. A big tower with satellite dishes and aerials. I must be in a science park, and this particular one is home to the most advanced telecommunications research center in Europe. It's VT's Research and Development Lab, and the Gadget Show have got an exclusive all-day pass to go behind the scenes. Traditionally, this is how most of us interface with our technology, the good old QWERTY keyboard, invented, interestingly enough, to slow you down, not make you type quickly, so that you wouldn't jam up the mechanical keys on an old typewriter. So it's not a very efficient way of interfacing with your gadgets. It's pretty bland, pretty emotionless. And so here at BT, they're working on new ways of making that process more enjoyable and simpler. And you don't get more simple than this the digital media album. Now imagine that you've got thousands of photographs on your computer hard drive um, and the process of finding the one you're after can be rather complicated. All you do with this device is attach them all to an object. When you place that object on the sensor, in this case a wedding ring, it identifies the shape, colour and weight of the object. Then you're able to tell the computer to link this specific object with specific information on your computer, in this case, wedding photos. So when you put the ring on the sensor next time, voila, up come the wedding photographs. But it's not just photos that a device like this can enable. You can also link to other media and websites. A model of Steven Gerrard, for example, could take you to a Gerrard fan site. A little R2-D2 connects you to the Star Wars Galaxy's online game. And I think that's where this technology will lead, linking stuff you buy to relevant websites. So when you buy your kids a toy and place it on a sensor, it'll open a whole host of online goodies. I can hear marketing types everywhere just chomping at the bit. These days, the amount of information we have to absorb every day is enormous, and seeking it out can be pretty stressful. A lot of people, including BT though, are working on ways of delivering that information to us in a gentler, more emotionally pleasing way. It's a concept called ambient technology, and it's going to be big. Believe it or not, this object can tell you what the weather's like outside, what the traffic's like on your route to work whether your eBay item is sold or whether a friend's waiting on instant messenger. And it's part of a mini revolution of ambient objects that are trying to make the information delivered to you in traditional terms via email or SMS far more personal. This particular object uses a light matrix as a display. So unlike normal words on a page, it's not straightforward, it's more abstract. So if, say, you've got a stock option, and your stocks go up, you'll get a particular shape that you recognise as good news coming up on the screen. It can actually announce the weather. And bearing in mind this thing is a prototype, I'm hopefully now going to show you that in action. Here we go. Weather forecast. Fantastic, so you can see it's just lit up. A voice has said weather forecast. Did you get that on your sound there? Bring your mic nice and close so that when I wave over it, you can hear it. This is very exciting. So this device has just received a uh, note that there is a weather forecast available on my computer. So my server somewhere else in the house and via my own Wi-Fi network, it's magically and wirelessly um, received that information. All I've got to do now, hopefully, if it works, is wave my hand over it and we should be able to receive the weather. Here we go. Today will be cold and windy with a maximum temperature of 3 degrees C. It's Star Trek. The idea is that an ambient device can be configured to deliver whatever information you wish to get. These ambient flowers, for example, have been configured so each stalk represents a member of my family. Um, I've been keeping in touch with all the people on this side, hence why the uh, bulbs are glowing bright and the stalks are up. But this little chap, that's Uncle Fred. Unfortunately, I haven't talked to him about three months, and so you can see the stalk is right down there. If I was to contact him, not obviously on this device, but on my normal computer or mobile phone, when I got home, I'd find that it had slowly risen. Pretty impressive. But I think I've saved the best till last. One of the concepts they're working on here is the idea that you can make gadgets in your house spring to life just by paying them attention, just by looking at them. And this is one such 
piece of kit. It's called the Moving Portrait. As you can see, it's a normal digital picture frame with a picture of a little girl on it. But it's got a camera up there just above it. Now, if I were to stand in front of it and look at the little girl, she should spring to life. There's a screen on the side there, so hopefully you'll see the software tracking my face. And if I give her the proper amount of attention, I should get a reaction. See if it works. There you go. Hello. <laughs> Fantastic. And just so you know that this isn't a sham, I'll just avert my gaze so that I'm still in front of her, but I'm not looking at the little girl. And there you go. She puts her hands back in front of her face. I then turn and give her my full attention. And there she goes. And you see, the longer I stand here, the longer I give the little girl in the picture my attention, which is making me laugh now, the more feedback I get. There you go, she's happy now. So the idea is that by paying your gadgets attention, you get more from them, more information, more feedback. We put Google to the ultimate test. We tell John to get lost, testing satellite navigation. OK, the wheels are going in, yeah? Yes! Brilliant! It looked incredible! Wheels yeah, are now up, and we're now off. 